Hello, my name is Aisha. I'll be your instructor for this class. This is a yoga class focused primarily on the hips, but we'll also be moving the spine and the shoulders, a little bit of movement in the head and neck as well. We'll start lying down on our backs and at the beginning and end of class, we'll perform a little bit of a yoga nidra technique, which is a full body systematic relaxation technique that helps to support deep rest and deep healing at a nervous system level. Okay, so you will not need any props for this class, no therapy balls, no strap. If you would like to have blocks as a support for the hands in lunges, you're welcome to have them close by. We'll start lying down on our backs when you're ready and make sure you're in a nice, comfortable position. So even if you wanna grab some additional props that I didn't mention um, that are just optional, such as a blanket or a pillow for your head, make sure you're nice and comfortable and supported at the beginning and the end of class. So meet me there when you're ready, either with the legs straight or the knees bent. Getting nice and comfortable. Making any little adjustments you need. Close the eyes. Feel the shoulders soften down into the floor. Allow the entire jaw to unclench and relax here. Let there be space between the upper and lower teeth and feel the tongue drop away from the roof of the mouth. Soften the space between the eyebrows Relax the muscles around the eyes. And start to notice your breath here, in and out through the nose. If it feels more natural, you're welcome to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Become aware of the movements in the body, the subtle movements that go along with the breath. So the rise and fall of the belly, the expansion of the ribs. Feeling the chest rise and fall as well. And noticing any other sensations that go along with the breath. So maybe you feel the air as it's exiting either through the nose or through the mouth. Feeling the exhale on the lips or on the upper lip if you're taking your exhale through the nose. Become aware of the slight pause at the top of the inhale in the bottom of the exhale. And notice any other sensations that are present in the body. As you start to relax here, you might have a few parasympathetic responses occurring, such as a gurgling in the belly or an urge to yawn. If you feel the need to yawn, feel free. You might feel an increase of sensation in the mouth, an increase of saliva, and those are all good signs that you're relaxing. Start to breathe a little deeper here, feeling the belly fully rise, ribs expand, chest lifts as you inhale. And feel the chest fall, ribs knit back in, and the belly button draws slightly towards the spine as you exhale. Starting to lengthen the breath here. Filling up the lungs completely as you inhale, and expelling all the air from the lungs completely as you exhale.
make sure the muscles of the face are still relaxed here. The hands and feet are soft and relaxed as well. And we'll begin a short yoga nidra here, a systematic relaxation where I'll name different parts of the body. And as I name each part of the body, bring your awareness to that area and relax that area. Bring your awareness to the back of the head, the shoulder blades, the arms, the wrists, the hands, the palms of the hands, and the tips of the fingers. Bring your awareness to and soften the upper back, the mid back, the lower back, the abdomen, and the pelvis. Soften the glutes, the legs, the ankles, the tops of the feet, and the soles of both feet, and the tips of the toes. With your next inhale, imagine as if you could breathe up through the soles of the feet, all the way up to the crown of the head. Exhale from the crown of the head, down the center of the body and out through the feet. Continue just like this. Imagine as if you could draw your inhale up from the soles of the feet, all the way up to the crown of the head. Exhale from the crown of the head down to the soles of the feet. One more, just like this, you know what to do. Follow this visualization at your own pace. Good. When you're ready, start to invite some gentle movements into the body. Whatever feels good to you right now, there are no rules. You can stretch the arms overhead if that would feel good. Maybe rotate the head and neck from side to side. You can try scrunching up the muscles of the face and then relaxing the muscles of the face. Eventually we'll meet with the knees bent, feet on the mat, Arms out in a T position by the sides. Feet can be out a little bit wider. Start to rock the knees very passively from side to side. Feeling the knees fall over to the left and then over to the right. Try to use as little muscular force as possible here very passive in this rotation. Notice what you feel in the spine and hips. Good, we'll bring the knees back through center here. Walk the feet in a bit more narrow. Kneecaps point up to the ceiling. Rest the palms of the hands onto the front part of the hip bones here. And with the inhale, we'll find our front pelvic tilt Filling the belly completely, inhale and carry the low back away from the ground. Exhale, engage the core to press the low back flat into the floor. 
Inhale, belly swells and rises. Let that carry the low back away from the mat. Exhale, press the low back firmly into the floor, lifting the pelvic floor slightly. Continue just like this. Inhale, relax the glutes. Belly rises, low back curves away. Exhale, engage the core, press the low back flat, lift the pelvic floor. You know what to do. Try two more with your own breath, feeling that front pelvic tilt and backward pelvic tilt, allowing the muscles of the core and glutes and pelvic floor to relax on the way forward and slightly contract on the way back. Good. we'll meet in a neutral position here with the pelvis. Bring the arms by the sides, palms face up to the ceiling. From here, come back into that backward pelvic tilt. Really slowly tuck the tailbone under, press the low back flat, feel the engagement of the glutes and pelvic floor. From this place, lift the hips up into bridge pose. Continue to engage the glutes as you rise the pelvis up to the ceiling. Knees remain directly over the ankles. Keep the shoulder blades on the ground. We'll lower the hips all the way back down to the floor here. Relax the glutes. Curve the low back away from the ground in that front pelvic tilt. Backward pelvic tilt, tuck the tail, press the low back firmly into the floor, then lift the hips back up into bridge pose. Finding a wave-like motion through the spine here, lower the hips down from bridge, add in that front and then back pelvic tilt using your breath. And from the place of that backward pelvic tilt, that's how you'll lift up into bridge. The core, glutes, and pelvic floor remain engaged. Keep moving here with your own breath, following the movement of the spine and pelvis. The next time you lift the hips up into bridge pose, we'll meet there, stay there, lift the arms up, palms face one another. Fingers are spread wide apart and reach the hands actively up to the ceiling. Make sure the knees aren't splaying out to either side. Keep the inner thighs squeezing towards one another. Breathing into the belly here, maybe even reclose the eyes, tapping into sensation. Lower the hips all the way back down. Pick the feet up, hug the knees into the chest, wrap the arms around the legs, rocking a little bit from side to side here. We'll place one hand on each knee, bring the knees wide apart and back together again in a big circle. Take this movement nice and slow, warming up into the hip joints themselves, feeling the stretch in the inner thighs as you bring the knees wide apart. Good, from here we'll roll over onto one side. Press up to a child's pose. Hips can press back to the heels here, reach the arms forward. Rest the forehead down on the block or a blanket or the mat. Really relax the abdomen here. Let go of the belly completely. Notice what you feel in the hips and lower part of the spine here. And intentionally send your breath into the low back. So as you inhale, fill up the backs of the ribs all the way down to the sacrum, the very base of the spine. As you exhale, expel all the air from the lungs. 
Send your breath into the low back, especially on the inhale here. Let everything go on the exhale. One more just like that. When you're ready, we'll press up into a tabletop position. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. A few rounds of cat and cow with the breath. On the inhale, bring the belly down towards the floor. Bring the chest forward. With the exhale, press the mat away, round the spine, tuck the chin into the chest. Inhale, belly moves down to the floor. Bring the chest forward, sits bones lift. Use your exhale to press the mat away actively, rounding the spine, tuck the chin inward. Continue like this with the breath, feeling the pelvis move in that forward and back pelvic tilt, feeling the entire spine move here, including the head and neck. When you're ready, we'll return to a neutral spine. Bring the knees out just a little bit wider. Shift the hips over to one side, back to the heels, over to the other side, and around again. Moving the body in this circular motion. Make sure you're moving the ribs, head and neck, and add in any little variations that would feel good to you here. It's your practice. Move in a way that feels good to you. Circle in the opposite direction for a few rounds as well. Good, we'll meet through center here. Bring the knees in back a bit more narrow, knees directly under the hips. Tuck all 10 toes under. See if you can hover the knees just a few inches away from the floor here. Rise up in the space between the shoulder blades. Press back through the heels, but knees remain bent. Feel the activation. Legs are engaged here, core is engaged. Keep breathing, try not to hold the breath. Lower the knees down, keep the toes as they are. Walk the hands forward about a foot or two. Lift the knees up and we'll press back to down dog. Take your time to pedal out here, bend one knee, press the opposite heel to the floor and then switch. Waking up the backs of the legs. Start to walk the hands towards the feet, meeting at the back of the mat in a forward fold here. Take this as a really lazy forward fold. Strong bend in the knees, decompress the spine, release the weight of the head, neck, and jaw. Option to grab onto opposite elbows or forearms and sway side to side if that would feel good. Just letting the whole body decompress here. We'll take a cleansing breath. Next inhale, take it through the nose, full inhale. Exhale out through the mouth, audible sigh. One more just like that. Inhale through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Release the clasp on the forearms if you have it. We'll roll up to stand on the next inhale, but really slowly. Stack each bone of the spine and really make sure you're rounding and flexing the spine. Focusing on moving each part of the spine as you rise all the way up to stand. Roll the shoulders back a few times once you get here. Good. From here, we'll reach the arms forward, squat low into chair pose. Bring the weight into the heels of the feet, press the sits bones down towards the floor. We'll find a little flow with the breath. Inhale, send the arms behind you, straighten the knees, squeeze the glutes, rise up. Exhale down into your chair pose, reach the arms forward. 
Inhale, lift up to stand, reach the arms behind you, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, reach the arms forward and squat low. Continue just like this, inhale to rise, exhale to lower. Using your breath to move. Good, next time you lower down into chair pose, stay there. We'll take the right hand across to the left knee, left hand to the lower back for a twist. Draw that left shoulder back, keep the chest lifted even though you're pressing the sits bones back. Make sure the knees stay in one line here. This will make sure you're not rotating the hips, you're just rotating from the spine. Feel the legs burning, feel them engaged, working to support you. Just embrace it, keep breathing. Good, we'll rotate back to center, straighten the knees, give the legs a little break, rise up. Squat down into chair pose, reach the arms forward. Into the twist on the second side, left hand across, right hand to low back. Draw that right shoulder back in space here, rotating from the spine, not the pelvis. Keep breathing into the abdomen, even though it's compressed here. Feel the heat build in the body. Two more breaths, stay with it. Okay, go ahead and rotate back to center. Reach the arms forward. We'll take a fold here over the legs, send the arms down towards the floor, hinge from the hips. Option to keep the knees bent or the legs straight, whatever feels better for you here. We'll find a halfway lift on the next inhale. Take the hands to the shins, bring the spine parallel to the ground. Fold on the exhale, slowly walk the hands forward into a plank pose. Take your time to get here, keep the core engaged. Option to lower the knees down into modified plank. Shoulders over wrists either way. Next exhale, bend down through the elbows, lower the chest all the way to the floor. Good, take a little rest here. Stack the hands, bend the elbows, rest the forehead down, windshield wiper the legs from side to side. When you're ready, straighten the knees. Send the arms behind you, palms face up to the ceiling. Let's do some strengthening for the back body here. Keep the feet on the floor. With the next inhale, lift the chest, lift the arms, keep the gaze at the ground, squeeze the glutes. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, rise up, reach the arms back, lift the chest, squeeze the glutes. Exhale, lower down and release. Last one, you know what to do. Just arms, chest, keep the gaze down. Lower down as you exhale. Hands frame the chest, press up and back either to tabletop on the forearms if the low back is sensitive or back to a child's pose, hips to heels. When you're ready, we'll meet forward and tabletop if you're not already there. Lift the left knee up off the ground here. Kick the foot high up to the ceiling. With the exhale, hug the knee into the chest, round the spine. With the inhale, press up through the heel, engage the glutes. Exhale, hug the knee in, round the chest, round the back. Inhale, press the heel up. Keep moving with your breath, rounding in on the exhale, kicking up on the inhale. Next time you kick up, we'll hold there and start to circle out the hip. Keeping the knee bent, bring the leg out to the side, down through center, up and around again. Still engaging the core. Even though you're circling out the hip, try not to make it too passive. Feel the work that's involved. Good, we'll bring the knee out to the side, straighten the knee, kick out through the foot, land the foot down onto the floor beside you. Sole of the foot is in line with the opposite knee. 
We'll add in some pelvic rocks here, really good for the pelvic floor and inner thighs. With the inhale, press the hips back towards that heel. Exhale, lift the hips forward. Inhale, press the hips back. Exhale, rock the hips forward. As you inhale and press the hips back, the pelvic floor is descending and relaxing. As you exhale and rock the hips forward, it's slightly lifting up and contracting. Same with the diaphragm that's in the abdomen at the top of the ribs. Keep pressing down through the pinky toe side of the foot. Good, when you rock the hips forward, we'll stay here. Press the right hand into the center of the mat. Lift the left hand up to the ceiling, open up through the chest. Start to circle out that entire arm and shoulder here. Open up through the chest. Notice how it feels to move the shoulder. Good, we'll lower the hand down to the floor. Walk both hands about a foot forward and kick that left leg all the way back to three leg dog. Lift the heel high up to the ceiling. Try not to rotate through the hips. Go ahead and bend the knee, hug the knee forward to the nose. Shift the shoulders over the wrists and step that foot between the hands. Take your time to get here in as many steps as it takes. This is where you can use the blocks. We'll lower the back knee down, untuck those toes. Press the pelvis forward in this lunge here, feeling that deep hip flexor stretch through the back leg. Unclench the jaw, relax the pelvic floor. Try closing the eyes and notice really what you feel in your body here. Naming it in your head or out loud if you'd like. What do you feel and where do you feel it? Keep breathing into the lower part of the belly here. Either in and out through the nose or in through the nose, out through the mouth. When you're ready, we'll tuck the toes of the back foot under, lift that knee up, and swivel that foot down in a warrior two stance. Heel to heel or heel to arch alignment in the feet. Go ahead and rise up to warrior two here, arms up in a T position. Reach equally through both arms and see if you can relax the shoulders slightly away from the ears. Strong bend in the front knee, make sure it's aiming towards the pinky toe, pressing the outside of the knee behind you. Pressing back. Go ahead and reverse your warrior. Lower the right hand down. Reach the left arm up and overhead here. Keep a strong bend in that front knee. With the next inhale, return to warrior two. Straighten out the front leg. Option to shorten the stance slightly. Also the option to use your block here for triangle pose. We'll reach forward with that left hand. Then allow the arm to guide along the inside edge of the leg. Maybe hand meets a block as you reach the right hand up to the ceiling. Send your breath into the side of the ribs and waist as you feel the stretch through that fascia into the lower back. Peeling the ribs away from the hip here. Option to take a bit of a deeper stretch by reaching the arm overhead. This will really start to peel that side body, pinning and stretching the fascia there. When you're ready, we'll return to warrior two, slight bend in the knee, rise back up. Take an inhale here. Exhale, cartwheel the hands to frame the foot. Step that right foot all the way to the top of the mat. We'll meet in a fold over the legs. Cleansing breath out through the mouth, in through the nose. Audible sigh. Halfway lift on the inhale, hands to shins. And fold on the exhale. Slowly roll up to stand. Practice articulating the bones of the spine by stacking them one at a time, or at least visualizing that. 
Good, this is really good for spinal mobility. Roll the shoulders back a few times once you are upright. Good, when you're ready, we'll reach the arms overhead with the inhale. On the exhale, swan dive over the legs, hinge from the hips, dive forward. Lower the hands down to the floor, step the feet back one at a time into plank pose. Option to lower the knees down for modified plank. We'll hold here for five full breaths, nice and strong. You only have three more to go. Go ahead and lower the knees down if you haven't already. Press the hips back to the heels for child's pose. Take a little rest. If you'd like to stay moving, you're welcome to rock the hips side to side in child's pose if that would feel good. Or take a few rounds of cat and cow. Good, we'll meet up in a tabletop position here. When you're ready, we'll lift the right knee up off the ground this time, kick that heel high up to the ceiling, squeeze the glute. On the exhale, round the spine, hug the knee into the chest. Inhale, press the foot up and away. Exhale, hug the knee inward. Inhale, neutral spine as you engage the glute. Exhale, cat back, round the spine. A few more times, you know what to do. Find your flow. Kick the heel up and hold here. Keep the knee bent, we'll circle out the hip a few times. Active through the core still, even though we're getting a little, um, a little bit of mobility through the hip, active mobility. Go ahead and bring the knee out to the side. We'll straighten the leg. Set the foot down on the floor beside you. I need to create a bit of space. <laughs> Arch of that foot is more or less in line with the opposite knee. Let's find our pelvic rocks. Press the hips back as you inhale. Rock them forward as you exhale. Feel that inner thigh stretch as you press the hips back. Feel the pelvic floor engage and lift slightly as you rock the hips forward. Inhale back. Exhale, rock the hips forward. A few more. Next time you rock the hips forward, we'll stay there. Left hand to the center of the mat. Reach the right arm up to the ceiling. Circle out that arm and shoulder a few times. You can try rotating the hand, rotating the forearm as you circle out. Notice how it feels to open up through the chest, especially if you found you were slouching at all today. Go ahead and lower that hand back down. Walk both hands forward a bit. And from here, we'll lift up into three-leg dog. Kick that right heel high up to the ceiling. Go ahead and bend the knee in as many steps as it takes. Step the foot forward to the top of the mat. Landing in low lunge, we'll drop the knee down. Option to use blocks for the hands. Press the hips forward. Let yourself really land here. Close the eyes, feel into sensation. The hip flexors are just notoriously, notoriously tight on pretty much everybody. So it's okay if you're feeling a lot of sensation through that back leg. Don't make yourself wrong for it. Instead, just really connect with the breath. Allow yourself to relax into the pose as best as you can. When you're ready, we'll tuck the toes of the back foot under, lift that knee up, and swivel the foot down in a warrior two stance. From here, lift your way up to warrior two, arms in a T, strong bend in the front knee. 
Awesome. Try and reach equally through both arms. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Reverse your warrior, left hand down. Right arm reaches up and over. Keep bending strongly into the front knee. You can bend more into it than you think. Sending your energy out through the fingertips. Breathing into the side of the waist, side of the ribs. Next inhale, rise back up to warrior two. Straighten out the front leg. Option to shorten the stance. You can heel toe that back foot in a little bit. We'll find triangle pose, reaching forward through the right hand, then tipping that arm along the inside edge of the leg. The hand can meet a block or just float in space. Really start to send, especially your inhales, your breath in general though, into the side of the waist and the low back on that left side. Feeling the ribs peel away from the pelvis, creating space in that area. Mobilizing the fascia there. If you'd like to slowly reach the arm overhead, you can do so. With the next inhale, bend into the front knee. Take your time to rise back up into warrior two, especially if the low back is sensitive. We'll take an inhale here through the nose. Exhale through the mouth, cartwheel the hands to frame the foot. Step the back foot to the top of the mat, meeting in a fold. Halfway lift on the inhale. Fold on the exhale. Roll all the way up to stand. Last one. Focus on rounding and articulating each part of the spine. Rolling the shoulders back a few times once you're up and standing. This is a really good practice of, of moving the spine, moving the vertebrae, rounding forward and then ex extending up and kind of walking the feet forward. It's something to maybe add into your daily routine. We often get stuck in certain areas of the spine. So you won't be able to move the vertebrae very well between, let's say, like T6 and T12. So the lower part of the thoracic spine here. And when you're not able to articulate properly each vertebrae, you're not able to move properly. So focusing on moving each bone in the spine is really important. Okay, speech over. Um, let's do a little bit of shaking here. So from this standing position, this is really good for the elastic recoil of the fascia. So something that's not incorporated enough in movement, okay, speech wasn't over, is bouncing or shaking practices. And what this helps to do is create um, healthier fascia. It helps to create crimp in the collagen fibers of the fascia, which is really important for elasticity of the tissue and overall tissue health. So let's try a little bit of shaking. Bring the arms by the side, just kind of shake it out a little bit to start. And then we'll shake up and down by buckling and unbuckling the knees. So bending the knees and straightening them. And at the same time, just letting the shoulders bounce. Might feel a little silly, but that's okay. You can close the eyes. If you're healing, hearing little like pops or creaks in the joints, that's okay. Also means you need to do this more often. <laughs> Keep breathing here, close the eyes, really tune into sensation here in the body. In through the nose with the breath, out through the mouth. Keep shaking here. Good, continue to shake. I'll guide you through a nervous system relaxation breath. So you'll inhale through the nose, and it's called horse lips. Exhale out through the mouth and flutter the lips. I know it just feels really silly, but just try it. In, in through the nose. Out through the mouth with fluttering the lips. Try at least one more. Good, with the eyes closed. Slowly bring the shaking to a stop. So slow it down and eventually holding in stillness. 
feel the energy that you just moved through the body. So you might feel a little bit of this like vibration around you from the energy you just moved around. You might feel sensation in the tissues. When you're ready, take an inhale through the nose, reach the arms up overhead. Exhale, swan dive over the legs, hinge from the hips and fold. Halfway lift on the inhale, hands to shins. Fold on the exhale, step it back to plank pose. We'll hold here for five full breaths. Last little push in your practice here. Always the option to drop the knees down for modified plank, especially if you're losing form in full plank. I'd rather you modify than lose alignment. It's not down dog, not too much of a C curve in the low back either. Last full breath, nice and strong. Squeeze the glutes slightly. Lower the knees down if they're not there already. Hips back to the heels, child's pose. Keep the hips where they are. Walk the hands all the way over to the left. Stack the right hand on top of the left. Go ahead and walk the hands back to center, all the way over to the other side. Stacking left hand on top of right this time. Press the sits bones away from the hands. Send your breath into the side of the waist. Walk the hands back to center. From here, we'll rise up to a seated position. Knees bent, feet out in front of you, rock the knees from side to side. Good, we'll bring the soles of the feet together, knees out wide apart here for bound angle. Hands on the ankles, shins, or feet, and butterfly the legs a few times. So let the legs shake a bit. Good, we'll make our way into the fold here. So keep the spine upright at first. I'll show you what I mean from a side view. Keep the spine upright at first. Hinge from the hips, not the spine. So hinge from the hips at first. Bring the chest forward as much as you can. Then you can start to round the back and get a little lazy with it. Take the chin in towards the chest. Allow the spine, upper back and mid back to relax. Completely release the weight of the head and neck as well. There's no need to hold up the head. Soften the abdomen. And make your way to an upright spine. Feet on the floor, rock the knees side to side again. Option to try a reverse table here or a reverse plank. So bent knees or straight legs, your choice. Hands behind you, option to be on fists or the palms of the hands. Squeeze the glutes and lift the hips up. If you're in tabletop, it looks like this. Feeling a stretch through the front of the arms, perhaps, the shoulders. Keep the glutes engaged, protecting the low back. And lower the hips all the way back down. Good, we'll come into pigeon pose here. So we have a few different options. You can start in a Z pose sit first with the left leg forward, I'm not mirroring you, and the right leg back behind you. And this is a really nice option. It's kind of a, a middle ground option. Um, where you can fold directly over the knee on a slight diagonal. If you'd like a deeper stretch or the more advanced variation, you can straighten that right leg behind you into full sleeping pigeon and lower down onto the forearms. Also the option to slide a block underneath the pelvis for this one if the hips are really lifted. And if both of those options are just not it today, not feeling it, or it's just too intense, your body is not able to do it, and that's okay, you can come into figure four lying down on your back. Okay, so lots of different variations that I gave you there. Make your way into one of them. 
If you're in one of the upright positions, full sleeping pigeon or the Z pose fold, make sure the head, neck, and shoulders can really relax here. So whether that's using a block or a pillow to support the head and neck, or if the forehead can rest down to the hands, make sure you're doing that. Relaxing the abdomen, breathing deeply. Try and stay with sensation. Notice the deep stretch that you're feeling in the hips. And allow yourself to be with it. Soften anything that doesn't need to be working right now. Make your way out of whatever variation you're in. If you're lying down on your back, uncross the legs, windshield wiper the legs from side to side. If you're upright, take whatever pose you need. That could even be a down dog. Could be a reverse table like we did earlier. Could simply be rocking the knees side to side. Make your way into the pose on the second side, whether it's full sleeping pigeon, Z pose, or figure four lying down on your back. Again, if you're in the full sleeping pigeon, you might have differences between the sides. So if this side is feeling tighter, you need to use the block, slide it underneath the pelvis. Or you could also use a block to support the forehead here, even in the Z pose fold. Take your time to get comfortable wherever you are, as comfortable as you can. Making sure anything that doesn't need to be working right now isn't working. So by giving yourself that support for the head and neck, whether it's a block or a pillow or the hands, this will really allow the upper back to rest, the neck to relax, and allow you to feel deeper into the hip and do less work in the rest of the body. Slow down the rate of your breath here. See if you can consciously lengthen the exhales so that they're longer than the inhales. Feeling the heart rate slow down as well. Continue to lengthen the exhales. When you're ready, make your way out of pigeon, whatever variation. Take any movements you need to release from this and we'll meet lying down on our backs when you're ready. No rush to get there, grab some water if you need or any other movements or poses that we missed from an upright position that you need right now. It's your practice, feel free to take that. Once you're lying down on your back, make sure that you get nice and comfortable. So we'll move into our yoga nidra and I'll give you about a minute or two to get there. So if you'd like to hug the knees into the chest one more time or take some circles of the hips once you're lying down, feel free to do that. 
When you're settling in for your yoga nidra, make sure you have a pillow to support you or a block to support the head or just rest the head on the ground. If you'd like to cover yourself up with a blanket, that would be ideal. Sometimes the body starts to cool down as you relax. Make sure you're in a nice, comfortable position that you're able to rest and restore in for at least a few minutes. No rush to get there. Once you're in your comfortable resting position, allow the eyes to close. Allow yourself to settle in, feel the weight of the head drop down into the floor or something that's supporting it. Feel the spine relax here. Unclench anything that doesn't need to be working right now. Allow there to be space between the upper and lower teeth. Soften the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. As we move into our systematic relaxation, as I name different parts of the body, bring your full felt sense awareness to that area of the body and soften that area as well. Bring your awareness to the back of the head, the neck, the backs of the shoulders, the left arm, the left wrist, palm of the hand, the left thumb, pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger and pinky finger. The right shoulder, arm, wrist, palm of the right hand, thumb, Pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. Bring your awareness to the lower back, the sides of the waist, the abdomen, the left hip, thigh, knee, lower leg, the left ankle, sole of the foot, Big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, and pinky toe. Bring your awareness to and relax the right hip, the thigh, knee, 
lower leg, the right ankle, sole of the foot, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, and fifth toe. Feel the entire body. Relax the entire body. Feel this newfound awareness of the body. On your next inhale, breathe in through the soles of the feet, through the midline of the body, up to the crown of the head. Exhale down from the crown of the head through the midline, out through the soles of the feet. Inhale through the feet, legs through the midline, up to the crown. Exhale down from the crown of the head, midline, legs, and soles of the feet. One more time. Bring your breath all the way up to the crown of the head. Exhale down, out through the soles of the feet. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Feel the belly fully swell, ribs expand, chest lifts. Hold the breath at the very top. Exhale, audible sigh through the mouth. Return your breath to its natural state. and let yourself fully relax here. Let yourself simply be here in stillness. Invite some gentle movements into the body whenever you feel ready for movement. In your own time, bend the knees, hug the knees into the chest, roll over onto one side and press up to a seat. Stay aware of each movement that brings you up through that transition to a seated position. Once you get here, bring the hands to a prayer position in front of the chest, pressing the knuckles into the sternum, the breastbone, allowing yourself to rest in a little moment of gratitude here for your body, 
aware, awake, alive, everything that it does for you, all of your organs and systems. Thanking yourself for practicing yoga and movement today. The light in me honors and bows to the light in you. Namaste.